This video will demonstrate an automated kickstart installation, at least the start of it, once configured. As done in another video, automated kickstart installations are fairly simple. All you need to do is include the desired kickstart file on an appropriate device and start the installation process. We assume the installation is done over a network server so you don't have to change CDs. Let's start the Red Hat Enterprise Linux 5 installation process. When you get to the initial installation screen, you need to know how to call the kickstart file from appropriate media. For example, if I've set up the kickstart file on a USB key, I could cite it with a command such as ks for kickstart. The kickstart file being on a hard drive of some sort. On some USB device on the first partition, some trial and error may be required. And since I put the kickstart file on the top level directory on that USB key, I would just cite that file name after a forward slash. And I just cite the name of the kickstart file, which I've arbitrarily named ks.cfg. Sometimes administrators will set up the kickstart file on the same CD that they use to boot and start the installation program. It's available on the boot.iso file described in the RHCT course. If that's what's been done, just say it starts on, from the local CD-ROM and let's say I've put the ks.cfg file on the top level directory on that CD-ROM. The final option we'll actually test out is with a kickstart file on the local floppy drive. The first floppy drive most commonly ha is associated with the dev fd0 device. If I put it on the top level directory of the floppy, I cite it as follows. And the installation process starts normally. We'll see in a moment that it actually goes through the installation screens automatically because it takes the input that you've put into the kickstart file. Right now if you didn't have a kickstart file you'd be expecting to put in things like keyboard and language, but the kickstart file proceeds on its own the directives in the file are automatically fed to the installation program. If there's an error in the kickstart file, or insufficient information, it'll stop and request your input. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. It allows you to test an automated installation before rolling it out on a substantial number of computers.